just go over a couple of my trades in the market. Welcome to the Cryptocurrency Roundup. Some of the top headlines from this week are as follows. Iranian Cyberspace Authority says Telegram's upcoming cryptocurrency threatens the national currency. The Secretary of Iran's High Council of Cyberspace has publicly supported the potential ban of Telegram within the country, citing that the chat app's recent ICO as potentially undermining the national currency of Iran. He approves the suggested ban due to Telegram's potential for bringing cryptocurrency to all of its Iranian users. Australia has introduced new regulations this week. From now on, cryptocurrency exchanges must be registered with the authorities and comply with anti-money laundering slash counter-terrorism financing laws. The US Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC, has charged two co-founders of a financial services startup for a fraudulent ICO that raised over $32 million. One of the founders had made arrangements to leave the country but was detained before boarding his flight. On the other side of the globe, the first all-blockchain commodity trade was completed between China and Singapore. Sinshen Energy Technology sent a shipment of gasoline from Guangzhou, China to Singapore. Blockchain technology has been well received within the logistics and shipping industries. Foxconn is to manufacture a blockchain-based phone called the Finney from Siren Labs. The phone is being designed to aid its owners in securely storing while simplifying how they can access and use their cryptocurrencies, along with other related services. Siren are hoping to reach the mass market before their competitors. And finally, the Bitcoin Foundation's co-founder states, crypto isn't in a bubble. Bitcoin is the pin that's going to pop the bubble. Despite the price of Bitcoin continuing to fall, John Mantonis believes the real bubbles are actually surrounding the bond market and the fake equity market, as he puts it. Now over to Yieldcoin News. Samuel Leach has recently been featured in more articles. The Finance Monthly. Business Cloud. And the Financial Times Advisor. If you would like to read more, then the links will be in the description below. And that's all from me. See you next week. Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're enjoying your week. So this week's episode is more focused on the effects of ESMA and actually how it's going to affect your trading and what you need to be careful of and what you need to look out for. Um, more importantly as well, we're obviously all going go-karting to go kick some ass and see who the winners are. So yeah, awesome. Um, so ESMA is basically one of the um, acts that's coming into place that will basically be hitting a lot of spread bet and CFD leverage and things like that. Um, be a maximum of 30 times for major currency pairs. If you have a come have a zoom in on my screen over here you can come have a look and you can see some of the requirements here. So spread bet is really going to start affecting um, individuals um, in regards to those that don't have the right experience in the markets, it's going to really start to deleverage the amount of positions that people can take. So we can see here that products that are going to be affected at the moment, um, where it says professional clients, this is for all clients at the moment that we can actually um, really kind of achieve more than this. We can get 400 to 1 leverage at the moment. and. Um, you know they're now updating it to protect clients that don't understand leverage and are risking too much capital in the markets so um, they're changing it in place to protect clients but at the same time that also restricts clients potentials in the market especially if they're low on capital um, so we, we're going to discuss exactly what it takes to be signed off as a professional client which will allow you to come back into having these different leverages so um, when the when the act comes in, I believe it's in July. When it comes into place, it'll be 30 to one uh, for retail clients, which means if you've got small capital, the likelihood of you being able to grow your account quite quickly is relatively low, um, and that's going to be an issue. However, there may be a chance that you can get around the um, the decision for ESMA, and you may be able to be signed off as a professional. Now, uh, good thing about us at Samuel Co Trading, working at a financial firm is one of the parts of actually um, getting signed off as a professional client. So some of the requirements are, one of the requirements are is you've got over 500,000 euros 
of liquid assets excluding your house of residence if you own it and on top of that also if you've got over one year experience with working within the financial services so a fair few of us at Salmon Kutra have obviously come from banking backgrounds so that signs us off on our financial services and Salmon Co Trading traders that work here for over a year will also uh, be signed off hopefully as a professional trader um, one of the other ones that you've got to achieve is to be trading at least 10 times in each of the last four quarters so if you've worked at a professional firm for one year and you've also traded at least 10 times in each of the last four quarters then you tick two of those boxes if you've got over 500 K's worth of liquid assets as well then that's also another box ticks. It just means that you've actually got to trade in order to be signed off as a professional client. Now getting signed off as a professional client is actually optional. Whether or not you believe that you should fit into that criteria and actually sign yourself off. So you may meet these criterias and not actually be signed off as a professional. So uh, it's very important that you look into that. ESMA is something that we're going to be discussing quite uh, in depth on our May the 3rd event in London. I hope you guys can attend. Link will be in the description, so make sure that you uh, do come because it's gonna be absolutely awesome. It's a free evening of education in the FX and crypto markets. Um, big discussion panels going on about the FX market, cryptos, what the trends are. So that'll be pretty exciting. Um, I'm just going to give a quick wrap up of um, some of my trades that I've placed um, in the market and also what Fusion has been doing. So, so we're going to just go over a couple of my trades in the market and what I've been doing. So we obviously took a hedge uh, to the sell side which you'll be able to see just here where we got out just on the lower the spike of the day which was a um, great um, exit for us. We got out with our profits. Um, it then uh, started to rally, we got back into a buy. And now Cable, I believe, like I've been talking about in my previous um, Twitch uh, live streams and also YouTube series, that I believe that Cable will just continually go up now until the interest rate decision. And we have definitely seen that. So all we've been doing is buying simple dips and getting out on spikes. So here's the first buy here, getting us out here, uh, followed by the second buy of the day, getting us out here. Third one, we had a big rally and it bought overnight. This is uh, my Fusion algorithm, bought overnight. And you can see they're exited on the highs. It then bought back in again. So when we're looking at this, we've had, blimey, one, two, three wins, uh, constant buying, uh, four wins, and coming up to the 10th. And we had uh, all of these wins. So we've got this win coming up here, boom. We've got this one here, we've got this one. It's literally just buying the dips. It's like I said before in the stream, there's nothing too um, majorly complicated about what we're doing on, on buying the dips, but understanding the fundamentals behind it and the technicals as well is uh, really key to actually get in the direction. And that's been quite clear cut, I believe, with um, the BOE, the interest rate decisions and all the rest of it that's coming out and giving us a great decision just to keep on buying up the dips that we've seen on cable and, and until the official interest rate decision. For those guys that are watching this and are thinking this is all alien, and for those guys that truly understand this as advanced traders, I highly advise uh, joining our Samyon Co Traders Network group on Telegram. We've got over 1,100 traders from beginners to um, advanced experts trading over six and seven figures in there. So um, definitely worth joining that group. Um, I'll put a pop up in the link for Samyon Co Traders Network. Make sure you join. Now we get stuck in the Make sure we just give him a half a glass, yeah? <laughs> 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 
Problems to the side, like this roll kill. I got this new yeah, yeah. friend, she says she likes my skills.
finish. Your winner and champion for today's race with their best lap time at 7 tenths of the time of everybody else with a 17.5 round applause to your champion. The next episode uh, will be a bit of a mix. I'll be um, heading up to Harrogate, up north, um, to go meet up with some uh, business friends looking to advance on the yield coin front up there. I'll catch you later, guys. Be sure to subscribe. There's some awesome footage coming out. And be sure to subscribe to our Twitch so that I can live stream my trading account to you. Peace out, guys.